Well, hello, welcome. So we're gonna do a two eyeshadow, and we did a this or that poll, and last time I checked, it looked like this was leading just by like one or two votes. <laughs> so you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna say. Let's just do both. Let's do both looks. We're gonna do both duo looks, easy eyeshadows. I get asked about this a lot. A lot of us want to, you know, we, we wanna do our eyes. I'm gonna share some tips on um, how you can do them. If you have hooded eyes, mature eyes, if you have crepey eyes, if you have, <laughs> you know, issues with uh, creasing, I'm gonna share all the good tips and hopefully one or two of them is gonna work for you. So I'm gonna give it a second here and please, when you come on, make sure you say hi. Hi, Monica. We're just gonna keep this really casual. Feel free to ask questions throughout this. And um, yeah, you know what? I was thinking we might even, let me see if I can figure this out while I'm waiting. Hey gals, let's see. We're getting ready to do our two eyeshadow tutorial. And I was just saying a minute ago that it looked like this, the Bubba and the Zion one, just by a couple. So I'm gonna do both, why not? I've got two eyes, we can do two different eyeshadow looks, right? <laughs> Let's do. Um, okay, so let me, no, I was gonna figure out, I know there was a little button on how you could do a poll, but I can't figure it out, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's just do this, okay. So, I wanted to show you, I put my eyeshadows in my new case, my eyeshadow case, the aisle. This is the number 20, and doesn't that look so pretty? I put my uh, eyeshadow cleaning tile, fit right in there as well, and then I put some of my most favorite duos, and then my favorite shimmers, and my favorite neutral shimmers down, shimmers down here. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna be working out of this, and we're gonna do Bubba and Zion, this combination right here, Bubba and Zion, and then we're gonna do Paris and Pomegranate. Two matte shades, uh, pretty much monochromatic, meaning they're pretty close in the same color family, just a lighter shade and a darker shade, a lighter shade and a darker shade, but within the same family. So what I wanna do first, I Teresa, don't you love this? Yeah, and this is the 20, and I'm thinking, well, mm, that's not quite big enough. <laughs> But it's so pretty, and I love how big the mirror is, right? Look at that big mirror in there. Okay, so what we wanna do first, is we, want to, we wanna talk about first really quick before we get started, is prepping your eyelids. So I know a lot of gals say, I can't wear shimmers, I can't wear eyeshadows, um, it's always creasing on me, I have too many wrinkles, or my eyelids are too thin. So let's talk about priming your eyelids, okay? So if that is the case, there's a couple different ways you can prime your eyelids. One, with an eyelid primer, okay? They're out there. There's eyelid primers out there. This one happens to be from Urban Decay, and it's just their original. I even think that they have some eyelid primers that have different formulas. So maybe if you have more dry skin or oily eyelids or dry eyelids, but this one is just their original. So I'm gonna prep this one over here. And I'm just, it has a little wand and I'm just gonna tap over and I'm gonna bring it all the way up. Now, when you prime your eyelid, bring it all the way up underneath your brow, okay? And then just take your finger and lightly just tap that in on your lid and just let that dry. And so eyelid primers are made to, you know, kind of seal your eye eyelid um, remove any oiliness, kind of do a little barrier, a little primer between your eyelid and your shadows. So this one is done with the Urban Decay one. Okay, the other way that you can prime your eyelid is, and this is kind of the way that I do it a lot because I either can't find this, it's in the bottom of a bag or it's just somewhere on my desk, um, just use your one of your highlight shades. So you can use your lightest one or your mid-tone one, your base, whatever you want on your eyelids. Sometimes I'll prime my eyelids with my color corrector shade because I always have, um, you know, melasma up here. So Monica was asking a good question. Could you also use the Saint setting spray? You probably could. Um, I think what's more important though is that you have a powder base. And so an eyeshadow primer, when this one kind of dries over here, it will have more of a powder finish. And powder 
smooths over powder. Powder likes powder. And that's when if you, so that's why if you just put a cream highlight up here, okay? So this can go down to neutralize our eyelid first, okay? Your highlight shade. But the key is, is that you really need to put a powder over the top and powder, a translucent setting powder. So let me grab, this is our vanilla dust. I like to take my spoolie and just scratch the top of my vanilla dust tin so that it's a little bit more loose and then just grab, this happens to be, I think this is the um, smudge brush, but you can use any brush and then just pat over the top some translucent setting powder. And again, bring it all the way up underneath your eye brow. Okay, so this powder ver powder on powder is really what's going to help set your eye or set your eyeshadow and look. Really, it's going to make it pop. Okay, it's really going to make it pop. So hey, all right. So we had a vote between Bubba and Zion, which was the this, <laughs> and Paris and pomegranate, which was the that. So let me start first with the one that kind of won, which was the Bubba and the Zion, just by a couple votes. So we'll do both of them. Okay. So Bubba is a really pretty warm um, eyeshadow. It's almost like, like the color of a clay pot, okay? And then Zion is a deep, rich, terra, you know, deep, rich, like earthy rust tone. So these two together work really well. So let's grab our eyeshadow brush. This eyeshadow brush is really great. I use it probably for all of my eyeshadow applications. Um, and then if you have the cleaning tile, that's great because you can just clean it off in between colors to remove a lot of the pigment before you go into another shade. So the first thing we're going to do is use Bubba as a base on our lid. Now go ahead and just take your eyeshadow brush and roll it in and then tap over the top so that you don't get, you know, the fallout goes right back into the eyeshadow and we want to place it on our lid, but I want to talk about where you place the eyeshadow, okay? So one thing you can do if you're only gonna use one eyeshadow color, okay, is to keep your eye open when you're applying it, <laughs> okay? Yes, that is the new, new holder. Isn't that gorgeous, Michelle? So if you leave your eye open, you can see exactly where the color is gonna go. So if you've got, um, a hooded eye or eyes that are more deep set or eyes that tend to collapse over like a little bit of a fold like I do here. If I go like this and apply my eyeshadow, it looks great when I'm doing this with my eyes raised. But if I don't and I relax um, and I only put that color there, I'm not going to see it. So make sure that um, when you're applying, you get in there, you get in the crease and into the inside of the eye and over the lid, but then relax your eye and actually bring this shade up a bit. You can even just, whatever's left on the brush, just start to feather that up. Not just in the crease and on the lid, but just a bit up onto that brow bone. So that if you have really, really hooded eyes and or really deep set eyes, you're gonna see that color. You're not gonna lose that color. And especially throughout the day as we start to get tired and our eye muscles start to get, you know, tired, fatigued, right? They start to droop even more. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that placement up on the actual brow bone so that when your eye does do that, you can see a bit of that pretty color, okay? All right, now, that was Bubba by itself, really, really pretty. Another thing I wanna talk about with placement is not placing your eyeshadow outside of this guideline. So from the outside of your lashes to the end of your eyebrow, trying not to bring any eyeshadow down here. Okay. So when you, when we tend to over blend, um, I call it the windshield wiper application, which is an awesome way to wipe back and forth, windshield wipe back and forth. But sometimes what can happen is we get a little too aggressive or too much in a hurry and we end up windshield wiping way out here. And what happens is then you're actually pulling eyeshadow down. And what happens when you put, put makeup down? Anything that you place or pull down is actually gonna pull your eye down. And 
we want our eyes to be lifted and as open as possible, okay? So if you just start to think in your mind, a couple different ways. One, even, even just maybe just place your eyeshadow brush here before you start, just to give yourself that visual in your mind. Okay, like, okay, oh, I need to try to keep my eyeshadow within this area. Now, if that doesn't help and you need more of a guideline, take yourself a post-it note. Yeah, just grab a post-it note. <laughs> And put the post-it note on the, you know, right at the end of your lashes and angle it right here. And you can even just hold it. And then just keep everything on the inside. You know, you can even go over the edges of that post-it note. But keep everything on the inside of there. Okay? You see that? So then you're not bringing it down. Um, another thing you can do, another tip for guideline placement is to draw a line. And you can do that. You can take your one of your highlight shades, one that's light enough to see. This is the multitasker brush. I like this brush, this flat end. Because, or you can use this smaller end. Let's use this smaller end. Okay, so tap in, pick up a little bit of a highlight shade, and actually draw a line. So draw a little line from the end of your brow down to your outside of your lashes right there. Leave that on while you're applying your makeup and try to keep everything within that line. And then when we're all done, we'll just tap that out and have a little brightener here on the outside of our eye. So that's another great way. So three different ways to consider keeping um, your eyeshadow placement within, up and lifted and not down, okay? So draw a line, either visually just hold your brush there and be like, okay, that's where it needs to stay. Or if you really need need it, take a little post-it note and lay it there and use it as a guide. All right, so now let's talk about accent shades. And I'll show you what the, sorry, I need to just pull my hair back here, sorry about that. I just took a shower and now my hair is super staticky and it's really hot, by the way. <laughs> we had cooler weather earlier in the week, but it's super hot today. And I live in an old house with no air conditioning and um, yeah, it, that's fun. <laughs> Don't get me started. All right, so here is the Zion. Now, a couple different ways we can use this. We can use it to line our lashes if we wanna use it as an eyeliner to complement this look. You can use it as to make a smoky look underneath and on top of the lashes, but you also can use it as an accent, accent shade in the outer corner and in and up above the crease. So let's do that first. So let's use the smaller end. Sometimes that's a little easier for you to get um, it where you want it. So again, take and just tap it in to the Zion. Remember that these um, powder eyeshadows are very pigmented and they really do go on so smoothly, um, very velvety. So what do we remember about, let's do, I've got my line as a guideline. Let me use that this time. Okay. So where am I gonna place this? One, I'm gonna leave my eye open, okay? And I'm gonna put this right inside the line, right in the pocket of my crease. And the first place I'm gonna put it is kind of in the crease and then down in a V. Now, you do kind of have to close your eye a bit to create a V. So down in a V in the crease. And then take that brush and slowly start to pull that shadow up, but see how I'm stopping right at that guideline? Okay, and just pull that up so that when my eyes open, I can see that complementary shade that gives depth to my eye and accents my eye here. All right, so another place if we want to is we can do what they call like a, a smoky um, eyeliner with eyeshadow. So you can use the same brush and tap into a little bit of that Zion and come down underneath the lower lashes right under there. Okay. Now, one thing that if you want to have your eye appear bigger is to avoid lining the full length of your eyes um, with a dark black or even a dark brown or any color. Whenever you line something completely, what do you do? you kind of close it down, don't you? You're closing it down. So if you just kind of keep the eyeliner 
about two thirds of the way in, like on the outside of the color, but not all the way or even just right to the pupil. Um, you can still get some accent and give your eye some depth and some punch, but you're not closing that eye in. So let's take that brush again and dip it in to the Zion. Tap off. Now I like to hold my eye when I do line my top lashes so that, and feel free to do this as well. Just gently hold it because, you know, our eyelids need to be a little bit more taunt, you know, to help us because they are getting looser. Oh, sure, Allison. I possibly can. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Paris and I'm gonna do um, pomegranate, which have pomegranate kind of has a purple undertone. So I will definitely show you that. And um, I'll see if I can pull some out. So we're gonna put a liner underneath and a liner here. All right, so pretty easy. Now what you're gonna do when you're all done with this guideline is just take your finger and just tap, just tap over it to soften that and just to kind of blend out that line. And it, all, it also kind of gives you a little bit of a, of a brightness along the edge here. But can you see how this is very lifted? Like my eyeshadow is staying up and lifted and that's gonna make my eye look bigger and give it a lift. Everything's lifted instead of pulling down, which we don't want to do. All right, so we just did the Bubba and the Zion. And um, since the other one that we were going to do, and a lot of people wanted to see a cooler toned, and so let's go ahead and clean off our brush. So clean this off. Now the cleaning tile, this is the cleaning tile. It's um, available under the tools, and it is just a little magnetic tin the size of your highlight tins and it's you don't get it wet it just pulls off the pigment off of the brush so that you're not it's going to pull off as much of that pigment so that when you go to use it in a different color it's not going to cross contaminate your eyeshadows which is nice all right so let's do this again what do you want to see on this eye as far as um <laughs> oh they seem so closely matched well, we can go even deeper if you want, but I think a subtle, a subtle, can you see how it's lighter here, the bubba? On the inside of your eye, keep that lighter, and then a deeper building up of monochromatic shades is really nice. Um, it kind of makes it more of a natural look. We definitely can take it up a notch and go even darker if you want to, um, but those, these two shades, bubba and Zion, you can see the difference there. Um, I, I like to, Kind of start light and you can always build, all right? Definitely do that. How and when do you clean the cleaning pad? I just don't. I clean it by just doing this over it. I think it, yeah, you don't want to get it wet. You don't need to. Um, I think you can just take even a bigger brush and just brush it out or you can just take a paper towel and brush it out. But um, it just really grabs the pigment and pulls it off. But you don't want to get it wet. You don't need to do that. It kind of, you can even go like this and it, after a while, it'll just pull that pigment off, which is nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. Definitely add more, Teresa. If you want it, if you want it deeper or more intense, then take this side of the brush, go right back into that Zion. And if you want it more intense, for me, I have to hold my eye again, and so I can really build build up that color darker. Can you see it there? All right, and then you can even flip the brush over, use this end to blend. Again, if it gets too much, then blend it so that you don't have any harsh harsh lines or harsh distinction. You, you want this kind of nice variegated going from dark to light on your eye. So this is a very, very easy monochromatic look is just to pick two shades in the same color family. Yeah, okay, so let's do the other one. Um, Let's do the other one. I think I will, I really like this technique of just drawing <laughs> on my eye because I can visually see where my eyeshadow needs to go and where to avoid. So again, just grab the multitasker is great, the small end, pick uh, one of your lighter highlight shades that is actually gonna show up. If you need to hold your eye taunt, you sure can. So just bring this down at an angle like that. Okay, so. Out, end of your eye, end of your lashes. So just bring that kind of like this, this line like here, okay, this visual, so that we're not bringing eyeshadow out here. Because look at how that always, 
just that little bit of droopiness, just, just my natural pocket of, of color here and redness, you know, it just looks droopy. So if you keep everything within that, it's just really going to lift your eye, especially with your eyeshadow. Okay. So let's go into Paris. Um, this is a really pretty cool toned pink. It's probably our coolest pink. It's very, very nice. We also have Mama, which is a really pretty pink, but I feel like it's a, it's a little bit warmer, a little bit more mauve -y. But Paris is, is a really pretty pink. So we're gonna tap off. And again, let's start. I start kind of with my eye closed, just so I can get the lid. And if you want more intense, another way you can get a more intense color is pick that up and actually pat it on with the brush, kind of sideways to get more, there we go, isn't that pretty? Um, but then leave your eye open so that you bring that color, not just in the, on the crease, but all the way up. And with this eyeshadow look, let's bring just a very light amount all the way up under our brow. So it's very subtle. It's going from darker to light by using this brush to pull, pull that color up keeping everything within this little guideline here. Okay, so that's a really pretty, fun, cool color. Another way that you can apply your base shade if you really want it to be more intense is to take your finger, rub it in, and just actually rub it right across your eyelid. See how much, see how much color goes down? You can pat it or rub it right across, and it gives you um, a really pop. That's a pretty, pretty color. That's Paris. That is a nice, cool pink. Okay, so we have we still have our little line. I can see it kind of. I think I rubbed part of it off, but I'm avoiding trying to go outside of this area by keeping everything within. So everything's lifted up like this. My eyeshadow is going like this and staying in. All right, so let's grab this color, pomegranate. No, pomegranate. This color is gonna show, Denise. Denise, where'd you go? <laughs> Hey, Patricia. Hey, Princess. Hey, Gwen. Hey, everybody. Hey, Lisa. So, and Debbie, this, this color here is going to show. So this is a very intense color. So lightly pick it up and tap off. And you can see already what a great color. So let's really pop this. So you're going to, here's your line. I'm going to pop it right in that outside corner and then pull it into the crease. Leave your eye open so that then we can start the circular motions kind of start bringing that color, not just in the crease, but up a bit onto that brow bone. So we're gonna be able to see it. Now, if I was to go windshield wiper like this, that dark color pulled down would really, really pull my eye down. So look at how nice and lifted already that looks by leaving everything on the inside. All right, so let's go ahead and flip. A couple things we can do is flip the other side of this brush over Remember this side is great for blending. And if you kind of get in the habit of blending like this, like blending in, in little tiny circular motions from the outside in, you're gonna pull that darker color from the outside in, instead of doing too much of this windshield wiper, which like I say, can get us, get us out of control. It may take a little bit longer, especially with a dark color, to really soften that but we don't want really harsh lines. So just kind of keep blending, keep blending. It's almost like mixing a cake. You know, you gotta beat it so many times. You gotta mix, mix it for so long until you get it really mixed together, okay? So the more you blend, the more time you take blending, especially when you have two colors that have such a, you know, light to dark, that's really gonna help. So, um, yeah, tips for small eyes. This is this is really going to help is to keep a lighter color on the inside of your eye and on your lid. And then try not to drop any shadow down because that's just going to make the eye look pulled down. And then use a little bit of a contrasting color not just in the crease, but bring it up on the brow bone, okay? I'll talk another couple tips. We're gonna use a little bit of shimmer here to take our eyeshadow looks to the next level and also tell you how that'll help give your eye um, a little bit of pop and even make your eyes look more open, okay? So you can see this one is much more intense of a color, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hi, Renee. 
Renee, did you really want to hop on here with me? Did you want to hop on and join me? I'm going to brush that. Now let's go ahead and line just a little bit along these lashes, just like this. Hold that. Just come down and like in a V along the lashes, stopping about the outside of the blue or well, minor blue. Yours might be brown or green or hazel, but the outside of the colored part of your eye, um, not, not lining your eyes completely. That's a tip. Who asked me about that? Let me go back up here. Lisa, that's a good, oh no, no. <laughs> Renee, you don't want to hop on? You, know, you might have hit a button by accident. That's okay. So a, a great tip um, also is to not take a dark black liner and completely line our eyes because it's just going to close them down. You know, we could kind of get away with that. I think like when we were younger in high school and things like that, you know, line our eyes completely. But if you want to add some dimension, just kind of keep everything to the outside two thirds when you're lining your eyes. And another fun thing to do is actually use your eyeshadows as an eyeliner. So you don't always have to use an eyeliner pencil or even a, I have the worst time with liquid eyeliners. How many of you, I don't know if you've ever mastered liquid eyeliner. I've never mastered it. I make a mess with it. I can never get it to work. So my favorite thing to do is just use my powder eyeshadows um, and a little, like the multitasker that we used, this one here that has that point on it. Can you see that there? And you can do a couple different things. Oh crap. Can you guys hear that? The lawn guy's here. <laughs> All right, he's gonna be blowing, blowing my back deck for a few minutes, so I'll talk louder. All right, so take this brush here, and what I do is put a little bit of setting spray in the lid, and then just dampen your brush right in there. And then you can pick, excuse me, pick any either a complimentary eyeshadow or something totally different and create your own uh, liner with it. And so, hmm, what should I do? <laughs> okay, here's a color called Labyrinth. It's a, it's kind of like a olivey brown and I'm gonna pick that up. So can you see how I'm picking that up? I almost have my brush a little bit too wet. And now I'm gonna use it and kind of create my own liner. So I'm bringing that right underneath and then right along those lashes there. So there we go. I think I, ha I, think I got my brush too wet, which doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but can you see there? So you're lining from the outside in, but we're not going all the way around. And we're just using a little bit of our powder eyeshadows, which just, I think, give it just a little bit more of a soft look um, for lining your, lining your lashes like that. And it's already in your palette because you already have these eyeshadows. So you don't have to go have, like you say, a separate bag um, for, you know, your eyeliners and your pencils and things like that. Just use use your eyeshadows and create your own eyeshadow palette, uh, liners with those. Um, okay, so let's see. What other questions can we do and what other things can we talk about? I think what I wanted to do was show you another tip to make your uh, eyes look bigger is to always keep a lighter sh keep things light on the from here in so this this part of your eye here in if you keep this lighter colored with lighter eyeshadows or some brightness that's opens up this part of your eye that's why also when we do our 3d foundation we pop a little bit of brightener right on the inside of our eye there, right? Because that just really opens up our eyes. So you can, don't forget to add a bit of brightener right on the inside of your eye to make those pop and open. But also you could do it with eyeshadow as well. Um, taking something like even one of these shimmers. These are all neutral shimmer shades. This one is Unicorn, which is quite intense. It's really fun to mix with some of the darker shades to kind of make more of a pastel shimmer shade. This is Sabrina, which is a really pretty kind of cream neutral shimmer. And this is Drift, which has a little bit of more of a, like a, it almost looks like champagne. So let me grab a little bit of the shim, uh, Drift. T you can take your finger and dab it in. A little goes a long way, remember? It's, they're so intense. So let's say I wanted to add a little pop. I can just put a bit right here on towards this si side of my eye. Now, if you have 
a lot of texture right on the really a lot of texture right in here then don't go too far um, keep the shimmer more towards the center of your eye and just tap some on but can you see how that brightens and opens up that part of your eye so that's a little bit of that drift just right there to give it a pop and to open up your eye a bit um, another fun thing you can do to take like this monochromatic um, Bubba and Zion and you want to maybe take it out date night <laughs> or nighttime or really make it a little bit more intense is to take hmm, what should we use um, we can do uh, one of these metallic shimmers like this is blondie and this one is called ginger so this one's more of a kind of a, a rusty uh, copper metallic and this one is a gold metallic and these are both shimmers um, let's take the Let's do blondie just so we have a bit of contrast. So again, I like to apply these with my finger and I'm not gouging into it, I'm barely touching because look at how much comes up on your finger. I mean, they're very, very pigmented. So one thing, you can all wear shimmers, we can. It's just remembering with our eye, where do we have the most texture? If we have a lot of texture here and a lot of texture here, but a lot of times right in the center of our eye where our eyeball protrudes the most, that part of the skin, because our eyeball is under there, is usually stays pretty smooth, okay? So if you have not worn shimmers and you feel like you can't, try them, but try them just right here in the center, okay? And then what you can do is just tap the majority of that shimmer shade. Like I said, that's blondie right there. And then go back to your brush, your blending brush, and then just lightly blend a bit towards the center and then take a little bit and blend it that way, just lightly so that, and you can even just kind of tap so that it's not too harsh of a distinction, but that's a fun way to add just a little extra pop with some with shimmers to your eyes okay kind of fun what do you think and we could line that as well all right so tell me what questions do you have for me um i'd love to stay and just visit with you about eyeshadows um this is the the new eyeshadow case it's it is really pretty i love how big this mirror is here um, it's also all magnetic. I wish they, I wish they weren't so expensive. I mean, I kind of get it. They're probably custom made and it's not like they're manufacturing, you know, a million of these like they would for some bigger, bigger company. We're a small company, you know, locally, you know, owned by a woman in Utah. So it's not like we are a huge company. And I understand that, you know, having things custom made, like this says Saint on it. Um, and it's just beautiful. I, I wish it wasn't so expensive. This one's the 20. And then they have a 49 also, but gosh, it's gorgeous. Okay. Oh, okay. So first, Monica, what do you got for me? What was the other brush you used? All right, so let me go over the eyeshadow brushes. So this is the eyeshadow brush. This is the most universal, pretty generic name. It's called the eyeshadow brush. It's got the nice fluffy end for applying your base shade, for blending. It has the end that I kind of call like the, looks like more like a, a pencil eraser, a little more dense. Okay, so that's the eyeshadow brush. Um, this brush is the smudge brush. Um, I use this brush for a lot of things. You can actually use it to apply your cream highlights in smaller areas. You know, you can contour areas with it. You can also use it to what they call like smudge eyeshadow. So really smudge it. Um, I prefer this brush for pretty much everything I do with my eyes. The other two brushes we used, this one's the multitasker. So it has the finer end for lining. You can do lining uh, your eyelashes with it. Even this larger end, a lot of times I'll use this end to pat on eyeshadow if I really want it to be intense. But I find that um, patting it on with my finger works as well, just as well. So multitasker. And then one other eyeshadow brush is, this is called the, um, line brush. So the line brush has a spoolie on one end, which is great for taming your brows, uh, applying brow wax to them. And also this more angled end 
I use to like fill in my brows, uh, line my brows and fill them in. So that's called the line brush. That's a great brush as well. Okay, so let's see, Allison. Um, Allison wants to see some purples. Okay, let me grab my big mama, big palette full of eyeshadows. Let me find them. All right, so we have a few purples. The ones that I know I've created some really pretty purples by using um, a couple of the gray tones mixed with the unicorn. But so the, the purple purple, the one that looks most like purple is this one here. It's called As If. Now, As If is a shimmer and it is purple. You see that? It's very purpley. I don't know. I, I don't know why. Maybe I need to do this differently. It's hard to turn my hand that way. So that's that's as if. Now, one thing you can do with that purple shade is you can use it with um, this shade here is called Amethyst. Okay. This one is not shimmer. It's more of a matte. It's like a purple, kind of a kind of a mauvey purple. Can you see that? So that's amethyst and that's as if. And then there's also a shade called London that also has kind of a purple, purple tone to it. And this is a matte as well. That one's called London. Now, some things that I have done to make my, to make something look more purple is I'll use um, London or amethyst with a little bit of uh, unicorn <laughs> and what that does is sometimes you can put this over and you can create more of a pastel purple so that was amethyst with a little bit of the unicorn rubbed over the top so see how it changed the color and same thing over the as if I can lighten it by adding unicorn which is the white shimmer over that as if and make something that's a little bit more of a lighter shimmer. So that kind of brings it down. So I don't know, Does that was that helpful? Those were some purples that I know <laughs> I've used before. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, we're having so much fun. What other questions do you have about eyeshadows that I can help with? Um, another tip I have is <laughs> I keep a bottle of spray alcohol um, right here at my makeup table if you you know it's a good pl place to have one um, or even in your bathroom wherever you do your makeup and um, I use it because you know I like to clean my fingers off especially if I am touching my like putting lip color on my lips and then I don't want to dip into my makeup and then uh, go from my mouth to my eyes you know what I mean so just use a little bit of I just use a little bit of this uh, rubbing alcohol just because it's easy to have on hand. And um, yeah, that's a little tip. Keep your fingers sanitized. <laughs> you probably do it with like hand sanitizer as well, but I just like the alcohol because it evaporates quickly and I can just squirt a little bit on. Yeah. So Allison, you love the amethyst. You're welcome. Yeah. As if doesn't look as dark on. And all of the eyeshadows, depending on how you blend them out, you know, or build them up are going to look different. You know, they're not going to be as dark um, depending on how you build them or blend them. Um, Patricia, I, I don't use the rubbing alcohol to clean my brushes. Um, you can use them. You could probably use just a little bit maybe to clean the outside or the handles, but I would be careful. Um, not doing that too heavily or getting them too wet. Um, I prefer, I clean all my brushes with our Saint brush cleaner. Um, and, you know, it just is, makes them e easy to use because I can use them right away. Um, you can clean them off like once a week deeply. It'll sanitize them and remove any bacteria. And it also helps remove, you know, it'll take all the color out of them so that they, they never really look like, they're always going to have a little bit of color in them because we're working with pigment, right? So this brush, I cleaned it and it still has a little bit, you know, this one's been cleaned a little bit, but it's not, it's clean, it's sanitized, um, pretty much all the color is out of it, but it's still going to be stained a bit, but it's not going to transfer. You know, that's, that's going to be a good way to clean your brushes. Yeah, 
Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This bottle's almost empty. I go through this a lot. <laughs> I clean my brushes, all my brushes, once a week, deeply. Um, and uh, I really love that because you can use your brushes right away. Now, one thing, if you are cleaning your brushes with a... Um, with water, um, like a brush cleaner that you swirl these into water, don't ever let them soak, okay? Because you, you never wanna let your brushes soak. Even your, your art brushes, you never wanna just let them sit in, sit in a pot of water and soak. It damages them. Um, but one thing that's really important is no matter what you do after you clean your brushes, you need to let them, let them air dry, especially if they're wet. Do not clean them and put them away wet in an enclosed, box or drawer because you know you'll get mold on them it's important to leave them out and let them air dry completely before you store them again that's really important to do the cool thing about the brush cleaner is that there's really no dry time because you're it's more of a i spray it how i clean my brushes with the brush cleaners i have like little washcloths that i use just for the makeup and so you can just squirt some on um, a towel or a washcloth and then take your brush and just start swirling over the brush cleaner where it was wet. Just keep swirling, 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 swirling. And then I'll go to another area that is, you know, doesn't have anything and just keep lightly swirling. And look at that. That's the one I just used. Doesn't that look pretty? It's got a little bit on the end. That cleaned up pretty, pretty good. And that is, um, and then smells kind of like coconuts. Um, then it's pretty much, I can go ahead and use it. I can use it right away. Um, it's not soaking wet, and so I can use it right away, which is nice. That's nice about the brush cleaner. Okay, you bet. <laughs> okay, so I think, let's see. We oh Gosh, we've been going for about 40 minutes here, so... Um, I guess we'll just kind of close it down. I don't want to keep this too long and let you all get off to dinner and your evening activities. But thank you for watching. If you, as usual, ever have questions for me and you're catching this on the replay, I'll save it. You can comment. I'll still reply back to those comments. You can always message me directly here on Facebook if you have questions for me. And if you liked any of these colors or want to get some of these eyeshadows and you want to shop from me, I can send you a link to shop with me. I would love that as well very much. So have a great night and thanks so much for playing along with some eyeshadows tonight. Talk to you later. Bye.